in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I confess, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting God.
Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of truth, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we will live in remembrance, we may always hold true in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For it had not yet fallen upon any of them, They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I a Christian? Each one of us must know the answer to that question before we can fulfill the instruction of St. Peter in today's second lesson. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope, meaning our hope for eternal life in Christ. Here the Apostle Peter is urging the first generation of Christians to be prepared at all times to explain to others 
why they have become disciples of the Lord Jesus. But no one can give what he does not have. So before we can explain our faith to others, we have to understand it ourselves. People become Christians for many reasons and by many paths. But at the end of the day, no matter how I received the gift of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord, I must know and understand my faith or I cannot share that gift with others. And make no mistake, sharing with others the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord is an absolutely essential part of being a Christian. Go and make disciples of all nations. That is the great commission given by the Lord to his church 40 days after his resurrection the sacred mystery of his ascension to the Father, which we will celebrate next Sunday. So, if I am a Christian, then I must know why I am, so that I can always be ready to give an explanation of the reasons for my faith that Jesus of Nazareth is the Son of the living God. Put otherwise, it is not possible to be a private or hidden Christian. To be a disciple of Christ is to accept the sacred duty and privilege of being a missionary, a public witness to the truth of the gospel. And so we must ask ourselves again and again, why am I a Christian? In the first reading today from chapter 8 of the Acts of the Apostles, we read that a man named Philip traveled from Jerusalem to the principal city of Samaria to proclaim the Messiah to the people there. This Philip was not the apostle of the same name. He was, rather, one of the first seven deacons of the church whose selection was described last Sunday in the first lesson from chapter 6 of Acts. Deacon Philip preached the gospel in Samaria, and many people accepted the Lord Jesus with saving faith and were baptized. But their full initiation into the life of grace was not complete until two of the apostles, Peter and John, arrived and laid hands on the newly baptized to confer the gift of the Holy Spirit. And here we can begin to perceive how Christianity spreads. Chapter 8 of Acts tells us that Deacon Philip left Jerusalem only after the martyrdom of Deacon Stephen at the feet of Saul of Tarsus, an event which signaled the beginning of the first persecution of the church. Even in the midst of persecution, and sometimes because of it, the church's witness to Jesus Christ crucified and risen can bring souls to saving faith in the Messiah, and everyone who is baptized into Christ is called and sent to be just such a missionary disciple. And now we come to the crux of the matter. We are Christians only because someone else introduced us to the Lord Jesus and bore witness to the truth of his gospel, to the reality of his divine nature, and to the life-changing power of his suffering, death, and resurrection. So just as there are no private Christians, there are also no solitary Christians. For most Christians, the first witnesses to Christ in our lives are, of course, our parents. And as they teach us to eat, to walk, and to speak, they also teach us to worship the living God in spirit and truth through saving faith in Jesus Christ. But for others, faith comes only after a rupture or crisis of some sort, perhaps during adolescence or later in life, when the illusion of our autonomy is finally shattered and we are awakened to the complete lack of self-sufficiency on the part of all who are not the source of their own existence. Still others come to know that Jesus Christ is Lord only when their hearts are pierced with grief or enchanted with beauty or chained with fear or lifted up with wonder. And then they may be able to hear and heed the word of God if only someone comes to them as a missionary 
a disciple to proclaim the Messiah. But how do we do that for others? Listen again to St. Peter. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. But do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear. To be effective witnesses to Jesus and to lead others to saving faith in him, we must sanctify Christ as Lord in our hearts and keep our conscience clear by constant conversion from sin in the obedience of faith. Then, by careful study, we must know the word of God revealed in Holy Scripture and explained in the apostolic tradition. And finally, we must explain our reasons for believing with gentleness and reverence. Reverence both for the holiness of God and for the dignity of the persons to whom we speak about the Lord Jesus. No one was ever bludgeoned or shamed into authentic Christian faith. And the only motive we should have in bearing witness to Christ is love. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. It is just that love that allows us by our words and our deeds to bear witness to the revealed truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. That we may always be ready to give an account of the hope that is within us, let us ask for the grace of constant conversion through the obedience of faith. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be fearless heralds of the gospel and true ministers of the sacraments, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been baptized and sealed with sacred chrism in the sacrament of confirmation, that by the gifts of the Holy Spirit they may always bear witness to the truth of the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those afflicted by this pestilence or economic hardship, that they may find healing and peace in God's grace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those in the armed forces and emergency services who defend and protect us, that they may be preserved from all harm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, marked with the sign of faith, that they may be gathered into the kingdom of eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you have exalted your Son with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us, confirm us in faith, and lift us up to that glory where our Savior has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. God be praised for the gift of gathering at the altar after two months away. But let's remember that we're not in the clear just yet. Until further notice, we can welcome only one quarter of the congregation at a time, so it will be another month before those of you who are here in the church today can come again. And there are other precautions to keep in mind. Please do not socialize before or after Mass. Please take your Mass program with you when you leave the church and toss it in the large garbage can in the vestibule. At Holy Communion, please form only one single line in the center aisle rather than the two parallel lines we normally have and leave a six-foot interval to the person in front of you. For now, please receive Holy Communion standing and in your hand. Both restrooms in Sacred Heart Hall and downstairs in McGrady Hall are open, but please use them only if absolutely necessary. And please consider wearing a face mask if you are willing to do so. We realize that in these requests, there is something to annoy everyone. But please understand, we are in the most extraordinary circumstances any of us have ever experienced, and we are simply trying to find the best way to allow the celebration of the sacraments without endangering the health of anyone. This is when we would normally pass the collection plate, but since we can't do that, the plates have been placed on a small table in each of the three main entrances to the church. And to those of you watching from home, you can make a gift on our parish website or by sending a check to the parish office on Hampton Avenue. And thank you for your generosity. Finally, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty God. sacrificial offerings, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you a thanks, he said, the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of me. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you a thanks, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and live in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever. said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Oh, 